Shalom, brother Ra, coming to you another video. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who grew well. And a double Shalom to all you Akim and you Aqua, those that are hopeful, elect, seeking for salvation. I want to bring out a quick hit. Um, Psalms 34, chapter uh, verse 6 through, I'm going to go down to 19. OK, and this is a, a very comforting to to read these words in the times that we're living in. Just a reminder that the Lord is always going to be there for the righteous, those who are seeking him, who are trusting him, those of a humble and contrite spirit. OK, so regardless of what happens as we continue to move forward. All right. Into uh, Jacob's trouble. OK, and um, the final days, we know that throughout whatever afflictions that's brought upon us, take it cheerfully because the Lord is going to be with us. If we continue to remain with integrity and trust in him. Now, when you read Psalm 34 and 6, it says this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. That poor man represents Israel, specifically the hopeful elect. OK, the hopeful elect is the one that's crying unto Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, starting with the men, because the scriptures say um, set a, a mark upon those. Uh, the men that sigh and cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay, abominations represents a wicked, filthy act. Okay, and that mark um, is a mark of exemption. So when the Lord saves the elect out of all those troubles, it's, it's going to represent exemption. All right, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them Slaki, the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So the Lord has angels encamped around those that fear him to show what? That he's providing pr protection to his elect. Okay, because ultimately the elect is going to be the ones that fear Yahweh Shai. And fear goes into reverence, respect, honor, being afraid of something or someone that can harm you. And that's the spirit that the hopeful elect has. OK, so the Lord in, in return is going to give forth protection through his angels. OK, and deliver the elect. Verse eight, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, what does taste mean? It means to eat. And the scriptures say, eat this roll. OK, get experience, get into this word. OK, get the understanding and you'll see that the Lord is good. And, and we know that through the through the um, fact that we've been brought into the truth. You know, into the fold and we're seeing how righteous and merciful the Lord has been unto us. All right. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed means highly favored. So those that put their trust and have faith in Yahweh Shem Shai is ultimately highly favored. Okay. This is the only sure thing that you're going to receive um, true benefits from by putting all your hope and trust into Verse 9, O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. And the saints represents the Israelites, specifically the elect. Okay, so those that fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, there's no want. So like when, when we talk about famine, that's going to take place, right? Or oh, it's happening now and it's going to increase poverty, homelessness, death, destruction. You know, what what is what is the hopeful elect? Wanting to be alive, wanting to eat, wanting to receive the things that they need in these times. So the Lord said, don't worry about it. He's going to give you what you want and need in the times that we're in now and the times that's, that's closely approaching. As long as you continue to fear the Lord. And that's what we always preach. Verse 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. OK, and what, what are the good things that we're wanting? We want salvation. OK, we want protection. You know, we, we want to remain with integrity. All right. Through whatever the Lord, what, whatever path the Lord sends us down, we want to remain on that path with integrity until the end. OK, verse 11, come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. How is the Lord going to teach us the fear of him? Through the teachers that he set up, well, we see in examples of that when the scriptures say, um, I will um, give you pastors according to my heart, 
we shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So that's how the Lord is going to teach. He's, he, he set up, you know, specifically uh, Abba Bivens, you know, High Priest Yaikwab, High Priest um, Ariyah, uh, King Masha, you know, and, and our teachers, you know, um, the apostles and elders, great millstone on down. And, then, and what do they teach? Fear. OK. And in turn, that's what we're teaching, you know, continue to teach, you know, through the Holy Spirit to the hopeful elect. OK. Fear is a major thing. OK. Verse 12. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Verse 13. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. And that's self-explanatory. OK. Verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And just like Job, you know, scriptures say what made him an upright man because he eschewed evil. He departed from evil because he had understanding. He knew how important it was to fear the Lord and do that which is well pleasing to you. about Shem Yavashai? So we don't get involved in, you know, different uh, man-made philosophies and doctrines. We don't worship idols. We only worship Yahweh about Shem Yavashai. Anything else? Is, is going off Okay um, It reads on Let's see Verse 15 The eyes of the Lord Are upon the righteous And his ears are open Into their cry So the Lord is going to Ultimately hear the righteous Which is the hopeful elect Alright And that's why you're seeing That this man's government Is being taken down His rulership is being Is deteriorating Right before our eyes They're in a frenzy you know, like a chicken with their, with their head cut off, trying to figure out how they're going to respond to the great awakening of those of the righteous that's fearing the Lord. Because those that are fearing the Lord is crying unto the Lord and the Lord is making moves as he said he would. OK, so he's clearly hearing the cries of the hopeful elect praying and crying for deliverance and for this man's power structure to be taken down. All right. Verse 16, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil and to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. OK, and the ultimate evildoer is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man who known as the wicked. All right. And these heathen nations and two thirds of our people. OK, but two thirds are going to come back through the loins of the elect in the kingdom because the promises and the covenant, the inheritance is for them as well. But the elect will be the first demand to experience it. OK, and these heathen nations, they're going to go into slavery, man. OK. Verse 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of their troubles. OK, and the ultimate trouble that's coming forth is Jacob's trouble. Famine, death, destruction, martial law. I mean, this is this is uh, taking place now and it's going to increase as we get closer to the mandated mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip. And the Lord is going to protect and keep the right, the righteous that's crying unto him from taking the mark of the beast. Could say, because thou has kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. And that's a major, that's the ultimate trouble there. Okay. That the Lord is going to deliver the elect from. Last two, it says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit, meaning a remorseful spirit. OK, humble. OK, those that have repented, the Lord is going to draw on nigh unto you. And see, that's all the Lord is really asking for is that we repent and be converted. We change. The Lord is not asking for too much, man. You know, but he's going to draw nigh to those who are humble, who have a broken heart. OK, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Why is that? Because the righteous is not of the world. The scriptures say if the if the if you are of the world, the world will love his own. Okay, but we're not of the world, so with that comes afflictions. You know, ultimately the whole nation of Israel is being afflicted, but really the righteous is is the main ones that are being targeted and afflicted because of of our beliefs and what we stand for. Okay, but the scriptures say when I when I come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right, this is a part of the battle. But the Lord delivereth him out of delivereth him, Salaki. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So the Lord's going to deliver the righteous out of all, you know, the Israelites here on the face of the earth. Okay, which by the way is the sand of the sea. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna target in on 
giving salvation specifically to the Israelites of, of the righteous. Okay, the righteous Israelites, the elect, ultimately. Okay, and, and that's pretty much the, um, the point of the lesson is that, you know, regardless of anything that goes on, just keep with integrity, um, eschew evil, and keep trusting the Lord because we have just read that the Lord is going to deliver the elect out of all the Israelites, out of, out of all the people on the face of the earth, the elect is going to receive salvation because the elect has been the one that's been fearing the Lord, trusting the Lord, and eschewing evil. All praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles, and the elders of great millstone. Shalom.